It's time for Tanner Baseball here in Peabody, Massachusetts. We're live here at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School for Peabody Tanner's Baseball versus the Everett Crimson Tide. I'm Bernard Parisi. I'm Zach Stark. And welcome to Peabody Access TV. Whether you're watching this on our YouTube channel or on live TV, the Tanner's coming to this game. Um, I believe their last home game, uh, my partner Zach and I were covering. Uh, they lost 8-4 to to the Danvers Falcons. They blew a late 4-1 to lead in, I believe, the fourth or fifth inning. They look to get back on track. Um, the starting line lineup brought to you by PBD Access TV. The infield, number 10, Trevor Lodi at first. At second base, number 17, junior Joe Gilmartin. At short, the five-tool all-star player, J Jake Gustin, number seven. And then at third base, we have Cole Cuzzy, number 22. Left to right in the outfield, Brian Buckley, Jake Irvine, and Mike Martinez. A little bit of a different look in the outfield today as Evan Mullen gets the day off. Shot into center. And gloved by Irvine, easily one away here in the first. Actually, I believe that's two away. Um, I apologize. I believe you m may have missed the first batter of the game. It was a little pop-up to the second baseman, Gil Martin. But in any event, we have two away here in the top half of the first, so two quick and easy outs. Uh, we do not have the Everett roster with us at the moment, however. Um, we do have the Peabody roster. And on the mound is the hard-throwing left-handed senior of the Tanners, number two, Alex D'Angelo, as he sends one in there for strike one. And behind the plate, I believe, will be number 44 senior catcher, Eric DeMeo. Today's game, uh, today's coverage of today's game by PBD Access TV is brought to you by Lynn Ladder for your ladder and scaffolding needs and Greyvok for your business and technical consulting needs. So the count, I believe, goes to one and one on the Everett batter, a left-hander. Lefty on lefty match up here. D'Angelo fires one in, ball two, two and one count. So D'Angelo's not panicking. He's still got two outs, no one on, so he has a bit of a cushion to work with. So it was a not a very chilly day overall, folks, but the wind chill is making it much feel much colder as this one's right to the first baseman. I apologize that I believe is actually not Trevor Lodi. I believe that is number 13 Michael Tanzi at first base. Uh, it appears that coach of the Tanners might be giving a couple of his seniors the day off. As we go to the bottom half of the first inning here in Peabody, Massachusetts. As I was saying before, uh, the wind chill making it feel a little colder than it is. Uh, sitting in the sun right here, out here in right and left center field. It's a rather warm day, actually, folks. Um, gl glad to see many of the parents or fans or just friends of. Uh, or the players coming to see the games there. Seems like most of them are avoiding trying to sit on the uh, metal bleachers as I'm sure they're frozen at this point. Uh, all the folding chairs and blankets are out in force, folks. For those of you watching at home, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sunny today, but uh, the wind chill is, as, as always, here out in the open fields. It's what gets you. Uh, it's mid-April. The grass is starting to green out here on the fields, but uh, the weather hasn't really reflected that. We've had sunshine, but the trees are all still dead. We haven't seen uh, the April rainfall we're typically used to, and uh, the wind has just been chilling. So, um, try to give you the starting lineups. Uh, we'll have to go by jersey numbers for the Everett players, however. Um, on the mound is another left-handed starter. Uh, two consecutive home games so far where both teams have sent a lefty to the mound. I believe that's number 28. I can't really see from here. Uh, left to right in the outfield, number 10, number 1, number 7. And on the infield, numbers 20, 2, uh, 3, and uh, hopefully the first baseman, maybe he'll turn eventually so I can catch his number. Um, so, folks, I apologize if there are any Everett fans watching this game on our YouTube channel. Uh, I do not have the roster with me at the moment. Uh, couldn't find it online before the game. I'd um, like to thank our camera coverage crew um, here to help us out. Um, they are braving the elements right now. We have one of our camera crew members up on the top of our production van. She is probably getting hit by the windshield right now, so hopefully she'll be able to make it through seven innings. As one final conference on the mound between the catcher, shortstop, and pitcher, and the Tanners will send their first batter to the plate. So I'm not sure who the batter will be today. I believe last game was, is number 18, so that will be senior Brian Buckley. Brian Buckley, uh, senior number 18, the left fielder for the Tanners today. 
Winds up first pitch. Takes a strike. This pitcher, I can tell from his warm-ups, he throws a lot harder than Alex D'Angelo. D'Angelo, for the most part, seems to be a control pitcher. Likes to put his pitches where he wants them, as this one is swung on a miss for strike two, as I was saying before. This pitcher seems to rely more on his velocity, and it appears to be working so far. He had a called strike and then a swing and a miss. He got him looking on three straight pitches, folks. As the Tanners will send their second batter to the plate. Uh, Zach, can you see his number from here? Uh, not from here, no. Oh, I forgot. Uh, folks, almost forgot. We have a monitor right here in our tail. That is number four. That will be the center fielder, number uh, number four, senior Jake Irvine. So for the most part, this Tanner lineup has uh, all seniors across the board except for two players, uh, Mike Tanzi and Joe Gilmartin, the first, and first baseman and second baseman. Other than that, it's seniors across the board, folks. Here is the pitch. He takes a strike. Looks over to the third base coach. Uh, he didn't appear to be very happy with that call. May have thought that looked a little inside. Pitch. Check swing. Did he go? No, I believe. Pitch. Gets away from the catcher, but in any case, that will be called a ball. Pitch to Irvine. Takes it down low. Count is 2-2. Two -two. I believe it is 2-2, two -two. maybe 3-2, and two, I'm not sure though, but I believe it is 2-2, two -two, Zach. Pitch. Will pop into foul territory, that will go into the trees. Uh, yeah, last time we covered a game here, we were down on that first baseline. I had a little problem with some of the foul balls coming right in our way and into the trees. Uh, Zach, you took one right off the shin, a line drive foul by Peabody third baseman Cole Cuzzy. Um, shrugged it off though, even though it was freezing, I'm sure that hurt a more than it usually would as the pitch comes to Irvine. Down low, so it was a 3-2 count apparently as he walks Irvine. So it's one on with one out here in the bottom half of the first inning. And the Tanners will send Jake Gustin to the plate. Number seven, Gustin, as some of you may know, um, is going to be attending Bryant University on a baseball scholarship. He is probably one of the more talented members in the Northeastern Conference Baseball League. A left-handed shortstop. Takes a ball in the dirt, gets away, but the catcher blocks it down. Irvine will scamper back to first base. So Gustin has the ability to really hit it anywhere in the field. He also has the ability to hit one, hit one right over the fence, folks. He shows bunt. Runner goes. Diving. Safe, says the second base umpire. Close play at second base. He had to do a head first slide to get there. So a runner in scoring position with one out in the bottom of the first inning. As Gustin will take a ball. pitcher from the stretch. Takes one up high. He walked him. As we have two on with only one out here. Stepping to the plate for the Tanners is number 17. The second baseman, Joe Gilmartin. Gilmartin, if you saw our last our last broadcast on PVD TV's website, the uh, game was not live. We had to upload it afterward. Gilmartin came in to relieve Alex D'Angelo in the fourth or fifth inning, and unfortunately, I believe he would be tapped with a loss in that game as he gave up six or seven runs to blow the lead, as this one's hitting the foul territory. So the count goes to 0-1. Pewdy held the lead in that last game, 4-1 to for quite some time. Once Gilmartin came up, though, uh, they quickly lost it to Danvers, uh, and uh, I believe the final count was 8-4, to the final score. Pitch to Gilmartin, line shot in the right field. They're probably gonna wave Irvine home. He's coming home. 
Throw home. Not in time. Tanners lead one to nothing in the bottom half of the first inning here in Peabody, Mass. So Gustin to second, Gilmartin on with an RBI single here in the bottom of the first inning. So the Tanners will send Eric DeMeo to the plate, senior catcher, number 44. He will be attending college, I forget where, on a football scholarship, a talented Wagner College on a football scholarship as Gustin goes, throws high, in the left. Gustin Runs comes home. home. And that leaves Gil Martin on second. So that will probably be tabbed as an error to the either the catcher or the third baseman of uh, Everett. As Gustin was chugging hard for third, he didn't even have to go into a slide. It was a high throw, went over his head, and the right the left fielder had to get in to cover him. So as we were saying before, Eric Tomeo, a talent, he's a running back for the PBD Tanners. He'll be attending uh, Wagner College on a football scholarship. A uh, I've seen him in person, very talented athlete, um, two-sport player, playing here for the PBD Tanners baseball team as well in the spring. Doesn't feel like a spring day, folks. It's still a little chilly. We're mid-April. Uh, We're hoping for some uh, some warm weather soon as DeMeo takes a pitch down low. So we have a runner on second, Gil Martin, who was responsible for the first run of the game. So runner in scoring possession was still only one out as he walks DeMeo now. So we have two on with, still have two on with only one out here in the, bo in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch, the Peabody batter. Trying to get a glimpse of his number on our monitor here. I believe that will be, so it was number 13 of the Tanners. That is Mike Tanzi, a junior first baseman. As the coach of the Tanners, as he takes a strike, coach of the Tanners wants to be giving senior number 10, Trevor Lodi, a day off. However, we might see him later today. Uh, some faces that are um, at the moment are not in the lineup that we uh, didn't see or that we saw last game versus Danvers. Eddie Campbell was the designated hitter for a while before he moved to third when Joe Gilmartin came in. Um, Evan Mullen, the left fielder, and Trevor Lodi, the former first baseman, uh, would be getting the day off today. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them a little later today, however, as he gets them looking. So we finally have two out here in the bottom of the first. Still one on scoring in scoring position and runner at first. Runner goes. Catcher won't even try to make a throw there. That puts runners at second and third. So we have two men in scoring position at the moment. I believe that's Joe Gil Martin at third and Eric DeMeo at second base. So now batting is number six. So it appears that they have moved Evan Mullen into the designated hitter position today. He will not be in left field, so he is playing today. So that means that the two regulars that will not be in the lineup are Trevor Lodi and Eddie Campbell. So Buckley took his position in left field for the afternoon. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two. I, bel I believe that was strike two. Uh, I may have missed the first pitch. I think he swung and missed on the first one. That I believe that is correct, yes. So DeMeo takes the lead off second. Gilmartin waiting at third. Swung on and missed, got him. Got some swinging. So we'll go to the top of the second inning, but the Tanners tack on two runs on an on a base hit by Gilmartin and an throw a throwing error by the Everett catcher that plated Gustin. So we'll see the Tanners retake the field here on defense. Peabody moving the bases a lot last uh, last inning, uh, moving between first and second, and eventually second and third a lot in between pitches. Well, that's a good. 
So a good sign for the Tanners so far. We will head to a commercial break. This game brought to you by Lynn Ladder for your ladder and scaffolding needs and by uh, Greyvok. Uh, Greyvok, a tech and business cons cons consulting com company here in Peabody. Steve Jobs once said, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. What does it take to be a leader? It requires dedication, determination, and experience. At Greyvok, the motto is, our business is your success. We lead together. We lead with our community, with our customers. We believe innovation is a team effort. We merge design and technology as one company with many solutions. Peabody is a city with a storied legacy of industry and innovation. Greyvok is proud to continue writing that story as we grow alongside our great city. Visit our website to learn more about our diverse services and opportunities as we celebrate 24 years of business, a quarter century of innovation. All right, folks, we're back after a word from our sponsors. Uh, for those of you who missed out, uh, or just tuning in. It's the top of the second inning. Uh, in the last inning, uh, no score from uh, Everett uh, in the uh, top of the first. And in the bottom of the first, Peabody uh, brought home two runs. Uh, so an eventful first inning for Peabody. So Alex D'Angelo retakes the mound, goes into his windup pitch, swung on a miss for strike one. So we're already going here in the top half of the second inning. Uh, D'Angelo has been had a 1-2-3 first inning. He'll look to potentially continue that streak in this one. Another swing and a miss by the Everett cleanup hitter. Cleanup spot usually reserved for the player who has the most power because they hope that they can get three men on and hopefully send their power guy to the plate. As popped, popped up. up. And... Gil Martin gloves it out of the air, so one away here in the top bottom in the top half of the second inning. Looked like he had to really move from his second base position. I think he might have been playing virtually on the gra outfield grass. He had to really uh, move to get to that one. So number five hitter of Everett coming to the plate. This is number twenty. As he takes a ball down low in the dirt. Here's the pitch from D'Angelo. Tipped off the end of the bat, but it will go foul. D'Angelo steps back on the mound looking for a sign from DeMeo, the catcher. A senior, senior battery there on the mound and behind the plate is the pitch. Up the middle, Gustin diving play, throws on a first. He was safe as Tansy had to make a diving stop at that one to keep it from going into the Everett bench as the Crimson Tide finally get a runner on here in the bottom half in the top half of the second inning. Gustin, I have to say that he pr may have prevented extra bases there. That was a tremendous diving stop. Got to his feet quickly and looks like the runner maybe just beat him by maybe half a step. It's so number six man for Everett comes up. Chopper, third. He'll go for the easy out at first. So he has two away, and the runner advances into scoring position at second. So another right-handed batter for Everett coming up. I believe that's number 55 of the Crimson Tide. D'Angelo to the set and the pitch. Popped right into, towards us into left field. Buckley gloves it out of the air easily, inning over. So we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Tanners have a chance to try to extend their two to nothing lead, and they will come to bat here as Everett retakes the field. Uh, some quick sports news right now. Uh, tune in to I believe Nesson tonight. The Boston Red Sox, uh, your local Boston Red Sox, will be on the West Coast. They will play the Los Angeles Angels tonight at 10. 
A uh, quick little update on also some other sports news. Boston Bruins are up two games to one in their respective playoff series versus the Toronto Maple Leafs in the National Hockey League, uh, dropping a 4-2 to game the other night versus the Leafs, who won their first, um, at following a 7-3 to victory over the Leafs in game two here in Boston. Also, Patriots, New England Patriots linebacker James Harrison announces his retirement after 15 years in the, NH, in the NFL. We wish him a happy retirement. Uh, very good player in his years with the Pittsburgh Steelers and in the brief stay that he had with the New England Patriots. And the Boston Celtics, I believe they're 2-1-0 in their playoff series versus the Milwaukee Bucks at the moment. Um, they won an overtime thriller in Game 1. So we're going to go to a quick commercial break here in Peabody, Mass, while the pitcher warms up. And the Tanners will come up in a moment with a 2 to nothing lead on the Ever Crimson Tide. We will be right back, folks. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. So we're back from our brief commercial break here in Peabody, Massachusetts, as the Tanners will come to the plate here. 26 is still on the mound for Everett. They'll send third baseman Cole Cuzzy to the plate. Cuzzy, a senior, number 22. Uh, usually platoons at third with uh, junior Eddie Campbell. We saw Campbell move from the designated hitter spot to third in their last home game versus Danvers. Cuzzy takes a strike inside. So Cuzzy would like to knock one into the outfield right here, folks. He Here's had a relatively quiet game of it against Danvers last week. Pitch. Swung on and gloved by the catcher in the dirt, so that would be strike two. Swung on and missed. He got him swinging. So one down here in the bottom half of the first inning. Tanners will send their next batter to the plate. Cuzzy goes down swinging. Now stepping to the plate for the Tanners is number one of the Tanners. I forget who that is. I will check my roster right now, folks. But in any case, I believe it is ball one. Swung and may have been foul tipped at the catcher's uh, position. So it is Jared Ridley, number one. Uh, now that I see that, folks, I believe he might actually be the uh, right fielder for the Tanners today. They might actually have given Mike Martinez the day off as well. So there are a couple uh, juniors in the lineup today. Here's the pitch. In the dirt, ball. So it is Jared Ridley at the plate, number one. I believe I saw in the Danvers pregame warm-ups uh, he was platooning in right field with Mike Martinez. So they may have given him the day off as this one is in the left. Left fielder traces back a few steps. But Picked he up by number 10. Loves it for two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. So Ridley gave that one a ride, but you know, the left fielder was right where he had to be. So stepping up is number 18, Brian Buckley, I believe. They have batted around officially. So top of the order coming up. Buckley, I think he's trying to talk out of the way of that one. A little check swing. Uh, not sure what they called it. I think they may have said he went around. I'm not sure, though. He takes a for-sure strike right there. So Buckley, 
I be um, believe I remember he went down swing went down swinging or looking in the first inning on three pitches. He got him looking again, so he goes down on three straight again. So Everett gets out of a one two three inning, and the Tanners will retake the field. D'Angelo will go back on the mound. Will look to continue his uh, shutout game so far. Certainly whatever it was looking for after Peabody's productive first inning. A quick a well, quick inning. Well, luckily, well, I'm sure they were just hoping to get through a, a couple of product, quick productive innings, not only on offense but also on defense. They had a 1-2-3 first, and then they had a relatively quick uh, second inning. They only allowed one base runner. The that only He only got to second base. So they're hoping to get, maybe get another quick inning, try to get out of it and get their bats moving a little bit again because they will now be at the top of the lineup. They'll have the two, three, and four hitters coming up for Peabody, which will be Irvine, Gustin, and I believe it was uh, Gil Martin. So Irvine, Gustin, and Gil Martin do up in the bottom of the third. So D'Angelo is looking very sharp so far. Um, remember correctly, if you saw our broadcast from our, our previous game versus Danvers, he walked a couple guys early on. That would prove to be the um, one of the deciding factors in that game. The Tanners, pitchers, they just walked too many guys, and they ended up walking in a run or two. Um, and They had their chances on offense, uh, however. They just couldn't capitalize in the late innings, though. I believe they had a bases loaded situation at one point. They just couldn't get it out of the infield, however. The slick defense of the Danvers Falcons ultimately proved to be their downfall. Uh, also, just a quick thing of note, um, we hope that the that the number one batter of the Danvers Falcons is okay. He was uh, on a 3-2 pitch in the first inning of our previous game. He took a pitch in the back of the head. He was on the ground for a few minutes. Uh, maybe a concussion at least. Um, uh, we hope that he is okay. He's at home. He probably has a couple days off, a couple games to recuperate as the strike. batter takes strike one. So D'Angelo immediately going to work on the Everett batters. Swung on and missed. Good hardy pitch. That may have been a curveball out of D'Angelo. Count of 0-2. So he was swinging for the left field fences on that one, but he just couldn't connect. I think he may have swung over that pitch. So that one just dropped into the glove of DeMeo out of nowhere. Other off-speed pitch will be a ball as DeMeo just couldn't center it into the strike zone. So happy to see so many fans coming out to support their local teams. Uh, Everett fans on the first baseline is this one. To short, Gustin on to Tansy. So there's um, Zach, how many outs are there? I believe there's... I think believe that's the first out. The first out? Okay. Thank you very much, Zach. Score is 2-0 with first out here in the top of the third inning. So the Crimson Tide send a left-handed batter to the plate. <laughs> Swung on and missed. I don't think it was tipped. I think it may have just gotten away from the catcher, DeMeo. So it was strike one with one away. Uh, so we were relying on the monitor here to tell us the score. However, we don't have outs on it. So, and we can't really get a good angle on the scoreboard from our position here in, in left center. Uh, we can barely see the inning number from here. So we will try to keep up with the number of outs. I apologize in advance, folks, if we if maybe we sli I slip up a little bit as D'Angelo goes into his windup. Fouled right back into the cage. So that one had some steam behind it. Would hate to be on the receiving end had that gotten by the backstop fence. So in the dirt, so ball. Count appears to be two and two. So D'Angelo would like to get out of this inning, maybe one, two, three. Fouled away. So the batter stays alive here in the top half of the third inning.
Another foul going down the line, but we'll go into the woods. So I checked uh, the Everett High School Athletics Twitter page. I believe, uh, uh, according to their uh, tweets, they lost their previous game to Gloucester High 6-5, to a close matchup. And the Tanners, I believe they lost their last home game, at least to my knowledge, 8-4 to to the Danvers Falcons. As Looper in there, and it is a ball, so I believe the count will go full, 3-2. and two. So the Danvers Peabody rivalry continues on to the baseball diamond. Earlier this season, they lost a 7 to nothing game to the Falcons on the gridiron in football. As here's the pitch, and he walks him. So Everett will have a runner on first with one out here in the top half of the third inning. So Everett sends a right-handed batter to the plate. I believe this will be their left fielder, number 10. So this game is moving at a faster pace than it did last game versus Danvers as he takes a strike inside. Uh, obviously that last game was delayed a little bit by the injury to the Danvers player. Also the slow pace of the play. There were quite a few walks in that game, a couple walked in runs. And this one's grounded Down to Gil Martin. Out there, out there at first. Good double play by the Tanner defense from Gil Martin, Augustin to Tansy. That will end the top half of the third inning. So the Tanners will come to bat here. Bottom half of the third inning. They'll send Irvine, Gustin, and Gilmartin to the plate. So two parts of that double play combination will bat here in the bottom half of the third inning. So our, uh, this game's brought to you by Lynn Ladder for your ladder and scaffolding needs and Greyvok for uh, a business and tech consultation company here in Peabody, Massachusetts. Once again, that is Greyvok and Lynn Ladder. So this game also being brought to you by Peabody Access TV. This game should be in Peabody broadcast on, live on Channel 8. If not, it will be on our YouTube channel, the PBD Access TV YouTube channel being broadcast. So, and also on pbdtv.org. Games will be broadcast live on these sites and channels. On our PBD TV YouTube channel, uh, there are plenty of games just like these as well as other sports games in Peabody and uh, a wide variety of other events in the Peabody area including musical performances, um, things regarding the high school and um, just basically any important event going on in the area we're sure to cover it. Covering events from school committee meetings to mayor town hall meetings or to high school sports as the fans here in Peabody sure do love their high school sports, football, hockey, baseball, spring track, winter track, everything's popular here, folks. Also, so just a shout out to, I know some parents of Peabody athletes who are alum of Everett High School. Uh, we don't know who they'll be rooting for today, probably sentimentally they'll be rooting for their son's team. For PVD, but they also might be rooting for their alma mater high school. Swing and a miss, strike one. So Irvine is down 0-1 on the count. Here's the pitch. Takes one a little high out of the strike zone, so counts goes to 1-1 one one on Irvine. Irvine senior center fielder for the Tanners. With the pitch again, way outside. So up high outside and looks like it may have gotten out of the glove of the Everett catcher. So 1-1 one, one count to Irvine. He takes the pitch down low, may have been in the dirt. Ball two, so it's a 2-1 count. Correction, that's a now a 3-1 count. It was a 2-1 count previously. So it was now 3-1, and one. thank you Zach. So Irvine takes it inside, he walks him. So we got ahead of him and walked him. As they'll send Gustin, probably the most dangerous PBD batter, to the plate. PBD with one on first and no outs here in the bottom of the third inning. 
So it's already starting to look up for Peabody. They have a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the third, and they have their best hitter at the plate, Jake Gustin. I've known Jake for quite some time. I know uh, just what kind of an athlete he is. He's a very talented player. Plays for I believe he plays for the PVD High School men's basketball team also. Very talented there as well. But he will be attending Bryant University on a baseball scholarship. Count is 1-0. From the stretch, Gustin waits. Gets away from the catcher. Irvine will get to second standing up. No problem. Takes a turn at second, but will not draw a throw. He'll remain. And now we have a runner in scoring position with no one out. In the top and the bottom of the third, Gustin with a 2-0 count to work with here. Also noticing behind us some of the Tanner athletes starting to show up for their warm-ups for their respective practices. Some of, their tra some of the track and field athletes. Some very talented athletes here at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School. Gustin waits on a 2-0. Did he go? No, I believe. So the count will go to 3-0. Two and one. Oh, so I guess they did call that a strike, so it's two and one count. Pitcher steps off. Pitcher keeping his eyes on Irvine at second. He would like to run here. I believe he had a, st um, a stolen base earlier in the first inning. He's trying to tempt the pitcher to throw over. Gets away. Maybe a pitch out. So the count will now go to three and one. Some fans chirping out in the right center field area. Irvine takes a big lead. Popped into Way out over first. shallow center. Center fielder's there, so there's two uh one away here in the bottom of the third. One away with Irvine remaining on second. And Gil Martin steps to the plate. Gil Martin, the second baseman of the Tanners. Could also see him in relief later in the game if the coach of the Tanners decides to pull D'Angelo. But the way he's pitching so far, um, there's a possibility they might not do that. They might keep him in the game. As the pitcher, tempting Irvine to run but won't. Everett second baseman certainly ready to catch whatever comes towards him. Here is the pitch. Up high. Count of 1-0. So Gil Martin was the f had the first run batted in in the first inning. He drove in Irvine early. Was left stranded at second as the after the throwing error by the ever catch to third that plated Jake Gustin. That pitch was in the dirt. Count is two and zero. Again, Peabody with a runner on second, with one out. Irvine really tr playing head games with the Everett pitcher. This one's down low, so we'll go to three and zero. So Irvine was really, he looked like he was almost dancing back there at second base, trying to attempt the catcher, to, or the pitcher to draw a throw. He can run, however, he did have that stolen base in the first inning. He has a massively, looks like he's almost halfway, he goes, throw down, third, gets away, they're going to send he's him He's running home. to home, and another yeah. throwing error by the ever catcher plates a run for the tanners and they go up three to nothing in the bottom of the third inning once again it's irvine the run scorer so gil martin remains at the plate so it's starting to look ugly early for the ever crimson tide they're down three nothing on a couple throwing errors by the catcher maybe a maybe a fielding error. this one's shot into right Far out over the foul line, it looks. So Gil Martin's count will go f to three and one. Well, Gil Martin still has a 
pitch, a favorable pitch count to work with. He's got a 3-1 count. Pitch. Shot into center field. Another hit for Gilmartin. Right out into the open. Picked up by Everts first. They will hold him at first. Throw bounces in front of the shortstop covering second. So they have one on with one out. And they'll send Eric DeMeo to the plate. DeMeo has some pop in his bat. He, he has the ability to plate one over the fence. A talented athlete in multiple sports, certainly. Here is the patch. Shot right out Coming towards us. Deep into left center. Goes to Missed the by Everett's 10. Almost goes to the fence. That will plate Gil Martin. That brings Gil Martin home. DeMeo will and hold puts it DeMeo second. At second. So DeMeo with a big RBI double. Four to nothing in the bottom of the third. Wait. Pitch, throw back to the pitcher. Gets away. And DeMeo is going to stay at third. It's looked like the third baseman may have been trying to get it back to the pitcher. Went over the pitcher's head. No one was behind him to cover him. Signs of desperation from the outfield here in Everett as they're sort of motioning towards the bench. Been, what just happened? It's been a large part. It seems to be throwing errors by the Everett defense that's been really starting to get to them. They had two throwing errors that played it a couple runs early. Um, one in this inning and one in the first. Both runs that I believe played it Irvine and Gustin. Now DeMeo with a deep drive into left center that plates Gil Martin. Here's the pitch. DeMeo, he's not a very fast runner, so he was able to get all the way to second and then the throw the, uh, the throw just back to the pitcher to get the next batter to the plate got away. So now Tansy steps to the plate. Count is 1-0. So 1-0 count with DeMeo at third. He takes a hardy cut at that one, so and he foul tips it away. Brings the count to one ball, one strike. Eric DeMeo at third. And Tansy, the junior first baseman at the plate. Takes the off-speed pitch inside. That will go to a one and two count with only one out here in the bottom half of the third inning. Here's the pitch. Little breaking ball. They've caught the outside part of the plate, but it will be ruled ball, so it will go to two and two here in the bottom of the third. Four to nothing Peabody lead. When in baseball no lead is safe, folks, they had a four to one lead and against Danvers popped up. Foul territory, first baseman seventeen is over. Folks, uh, that's only the second out, I believe. Uh, actually I believe he may have missed it. Yeah, it appears that right. he it actually got away Never from mind. him there. Still just one out. A little sudden gust of breeze. It may have just uh, breeze may have taken it, but in any event, Tansy is still at the plate. Must have been just outside his glove here. Uh, wind looked like it may have taken that one away from him. I guess that's what happens on a day this windy. Well, the wind has finally died down just a little bit. Pitch up high to Tansy, so the count will go to, I believe it will go f um, full. Three and two. Here's the pitch. And he In walks Tansy. Walks. A law. This is, seems to be a, a, a trend here for Everett. Walking Peabody's batters consistently here. So this is a prime opportunity, prime situation here for the Tanners in their favor. They got runners at the corners with only one out. So the only real force play is either at second or first. One well-placed hit could place DeMeo. Could plate DeMeo to the... Um, Score the fifth beauty run. As Ridley steps up, he sends a way fly out towards us in the left. Everett's left. ten. He fly has out. it. DeMeo tags and he will come home with the fifth run. So that's going to be the second out this inning. So DeMeo scores. But Peabody's third score just this inning, bringing the score to five nothing Peabody. So they'll tag that as a sacrifice fly by Ridley to left field. They've been hitting some deep fly balls so far, a uh, trend that we didn't really see much against Danvers. Uh, there were mainly ground balls on the infield that happened to just get through the holes as Beauty sends Cuzzy to the plate. Ball one in the dirt. So Cuzzy, the third baseman of Peabody, senior. 
believe he will be attending Franklin Pierce University this upcoming fall up in Ringe, New Hampshire. Fine school, very very nice school, very good academic program. Previous pitches again in the dirt, ball two. Ball two, no strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. Popped up and we'll go out of play foul. So the count will go to two and uh, two and two. Two and one, I believe. Two and one. Like I said, folks, can't really see the scoreboard from out here very well. The numbers look kind of faded out there. It's a pitch. Fouled away. So now the count goes to two and two. So Cuzzy on the 2-2 pitcher, two outs. Grounds one, infield back to the pitcher. Flips to first for the out, and the inning is over. But the Tanners, they tack two more onto their three onto their lead. It will now be a 5-0 game going into the top half of the fourth inning here in Peabody, Massachusetts. D'Angelo will come back out with a five-run cushion to work with now. So we'll go to a quick commercial break. Um, this game, uh, before we go to the top half of the fourth, is a 5 nothing PBD lead. We will be right back with more baseball on PBD Access TV. Hart, right, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just... Please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. All right, folks, we're back here in the top of the fourth inning. Uh, last inning, uh, for those of you just tuning in, Peabody raked in three runs. Actually, uh, I believe it was two runs. I believe they had a 3 nothing lead going into that. I believe Irvine and DeMeo both... Actually, no, I believe actually you're right. It was three runs. Uh, f bottom of the first inning, Peabody scored two. Uh, really no movement at all in the bottom of the second. But in the bottom of the third, third inning, Peabody takes three more runs onto their lead. So the lead is 5 nothing as they uh, take the field here, uh, here in the top of the fourth inning. So Ir it was Irvine, Gilmartin, and DeMeo who all came to the plate. Big deep fly ball by DeMeo plated Gilmartin. And another throwing error by the Everett uh, catcher plated Irvine. And a sacrifice fly by Jared Ridley uh, to put uh, brought Eric DeMeo to the plate. That pitch was in the dirt. Count is 1-0. So the 1-0 pitch, D'Angelo having himself a fine afternoon, or fine morning, should I say. Uh, it's only quarter of 11 here in Peabody, Massachusetts. Same as last time, just low outside the box, so the count is 2-0. This was an early game, folks. Uh, Peabody is on April vacation at the moment. It's popped high pop-up in the infield. Gustin calls for it. Has to trek out a little bit and sun in his eyes, but he... Gloves it out of the air, so there's one away. So great def great defense played by Jake Gustin so far. He had the big sliding stop in the second inning, I believe, on the first Everett hit of the afternoon. One away, no runners on. So lefty comes to the plate. Lefty on lefty matchup. D'Angelo with the pitch. Outside, ball one. So it was a good fastball, but just maybe missed the outside corner of the plate. So it was an early morning for everyone here at Peabody TV. We had to be here at 7.30 to set this game up. We have uh, on our multi-camera shoot our live games. 
Uh, great job by everyone who came out this early on their vacation to set up, set everything up. Um, our monitor, the camera work, they're doing a very, very good job so far. Pitch is fouled away. Previous strike was also a previous pitch was also a strike, which brings the count to one and two. And the pitch is fouled deep down the line, but it is onto the hill by the light post in down the third base line. Count is one two. So Gustin, the shortstop. Playing great defense to get the first out. Shot into deep right. Ridley going back at the track. He gloves it. So that one went deep. It almost had the distance to get up and out of here by the scoreboard. But Ridley, good tracking that ball down out of the air. And good speed getting in position for that one. So there are two away here in the top of the fourth inning. Two outs, both on a fly ball. So Everett sends right-handed batter to the plate. Here's the pitch. It, gets, it looks like it may have bounced in the dirt before it got to the plate, so ball one. So a lot of uh, PBD at track and field athletes warming up behind us. Some of the track athletes down on the turf field. As he swings and misses, so he takes strike one. So we'll count goes to one and one. Uh, PBD very, uh, a few years ago put in a brand new turf football field and talk recently of them putting in a new baseball field as well. Uh, as this one is a big fly ball into center, Irvine tracking it down on the run makes the catch and the inning is over. So good 1-2-3 inning by D'Angelo, but he was helped out greatly by the defense on that one. Big fly balls. So it'll pop up to Gustin, the big drive into right for Ridley, and the deep fly ball to Irvine in center. The Tanners will come up to the plate. Peabody's turf field, really something to marvel at. A few years ago when they put that in, it was just before, uh, or just before construction on Peabody's new uh, Higgins Middle School, and it was a big part of the budget uh, for the public schools that year to put in this turf field. Um, it's one of the nicer fields in the area, and it, yeah, I hear it's really something to play on. Um, some health concerns have been brought up by local organizations regarding the uh, rubber from tires used in the turf field, but Peabody remains certain that it was a necessary addition. Peabody making renovations to the basketball court also uh, just over this past summer. That's right, they got the new parquet floor in there. Uh, also, folks, uh, on our monitor, um, just um, probably seeing on your screens at home or on TV, uh, it says five to one. Um, it is actually five to zero. That's been fixed. Thank you. Um, uh, Tanner still hold a five nothing lead. D'Angelo five run cushion to work with. So I'm sure he's not panicking at the moment. I mean, we're all human beings, folks. We uh, everyone makes a mistake every now and then. That's okay though. It's still five nothing. Tanner lead. Quite windy today. Uh, it, it's been a windy April. We've only really seen April, I mean, rain one day uh, so far this month. That was uh, not yesterday, but Monday. Uh, kind of puts down or brings an end to the April, April showers uh, saying because we just haven't seen that so far. It's been a cold, windy April. Here's the pitch. And he went around, so that'll be strike one. Just like last time, we see fans from both sides, uh, just outside of both benches. Uh, Everett up on the hill behind their bench, and fans from Peabody on their very small section of stands, uh, huddled up in blankets. Uh, Everett sitting in camp chairs. Some fans from Peabody sitting in camp chairs, too, as this 
It's very, again, very small section of stands has overflowed a little bit. And they're uh, just trying to stay warm in the cold. Uh, count is 1-2. So Ridley at the plate, he had the big catch and the deep fly ball on a right field. That may have been on the warning track he caught that one. As he pops this one foul into the woods behind the Everett bench. Count will remain 1-2. With no outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. So after a superb defensive play like that, I'm sure Ridley must be fired up. He wants to translate that success here. And he goes down looking. He may not have agreed with that one. Uh, looked like it may have caught the outside part of the plate, though, as the Tanners will now send the leadoff batter to the plate. That is Brian Buckley. Buckley, a senior left fielder for the PBD Tanners. Swung on and missed. Strike one. And he fouls this one away, so go the count will go to no balls and two strikes. So Buckley, he has gone down on strikes twice. And he goes down again, so that's the third strikeout for him on the afternoon, on the uh, morning. Keep almost saying afternoon, and keep forgetting that it's uh, just about 11 o'clock in the morning here in Peabody, Massachusetts. As the Tanners now send Irvine to the plate, Irvine he has scored twice, scored the first run, I believe he scored the third run of the game. Is this one's into right? It will drop in front of the right fielder. He's on again. What an afternoon, a morning that Irvine is having here. Number four, the Peabody center fielder. Two oh. outs so far. Irvine on first. And Gustin will step to the plate. He popped out in his previous at bat to the shortstop, I believe, or the center fielder. Shortstop was covering the center fielder for that one. So Gustin would probably like to extend this lead. Two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Hardy cut. He tried to get under that one. It goes into the woods behind the PBD bench. So count goes 0-1. Oh Gustin, in many ways, would be considered a 5 tool player. Can hit, run, field, throw, and... Count is 1-1. One, one. So Gustin, a 1-1 count, five-run lead to work with. So even if they don't score here, D'Angelo has a good cushion to work with. Pitch inside, had to spin out of the way of that one. Uh, last game, uh, he got hit once by a pitch. Um, can't, can't say for certain, but it may have been retaliation for the hit on the Danvers batter earlier in that game. Takes a strike, count goes to 2-2. Two and two. So Gustin, two balls and two strikes. Sits back in. Pitcher looks for his sign, gets it, sets, takes it outside. So the count goes full, 3-2 three, count. 3-2, three, two, two outs, runner at first. Rest of the inning rides on this pitch here. And here it is. Swung so on and missed. Pounds the inning. He pounds his bat into the ground. He wanted that pitch right there. Looking very similar there to the bottom of the second where Everett managed to do the same thing, directly following a productive inning for Peabody. So the Tanners will retake the field of play. They will put D'Angelo back out on the mound. Why not? He's going into the top half of the fifth inning with a five-run cushion to work with. And the defense behind him has been, well, to say su su uh, superb is an understatement. They've been very, very good so far tracking down deep fly balls. It's a very, it's a pretty sunny afternoon here, folks, and I don't think any of these players have sunglasses on also. So they have to track these balls down in the sky. Also, in the white cloud, the wispy white clouds above us, they may lose track of the baseball in the clouds, but so they're... Got to give some credit to the outfielders of the Tanners and also to the infielders as well for their defensive play. Uh, so far, 
um, probably I, I would say probably the most impressive players on the Tanners uh, t in this game so far have been Gil Martin, Irvine, and D'Angelo. Irvine's breached base a couple times, scored a couple times, as well as Gil Martin. He's played at a run. And D'Angelo, with four shutout innings to his credit so far. There's a reason that he's starting this game, folks. So I mentioned earlier, I'll mention uh, again, tune in tonight on Nesson, should be local channel 51. Uh, Boston Red Sox take on the Los Angeles Angels in California on their West Coast road trip tonight at 10. Conference at the mound. Just a little tapping each other's gloves, hopefully getting ready. So, a little side note. I believe I saw an Instagram post earlier this week. Uh, Jake Gustin, the short side with the Tanners, posted a picture. He got a brand new glove, I believe. Very happy. He's very happy about that. Uh, looks like from this uh, position, it's a, it looks like a red leather glove. Very, very slick looking, Jake. Here's the pitch. It's outside and in the dirt. Going to bring the count to 1 0 here with. No outs right at the start of the top of the fifth inning. So getting later into the game, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in the bottom half or maybe the next inning you might see the PBD closer get ready. That could be uh, one of three pitchers, I believe, for the most part. Grounded. D'Angelo spears it out of the air. Flips to Tansy. Got him. So uh, any of those three pitchers for the most part could be either Joe Gilmartin, uh, Eddie, um, Buck, Eddie, um, Campbell, the th uh, third baseman of the Tanners, and Joe Zito, a left-hander junior. So all three juniors and a senior starter. Certainly will be an interesting call if P.O.D. brings Joe Gilmartin out. It will certainly, certainly show that they have confidence in his overall performance after he most likely gave away that last game we covered when he gave away uh, seven or eight runs toward the end of the game to Danvers. Um, this uh, Peabody pitching staff is not a staff to be taken very lightly, folks. Their opening day game, they won 11-3. I believe it was versus Revere. Uh, they had 13 strikeouts combined between the four pitchers overall. Here's the pitch. So and he takes a strike. So don't let Gil Martin's performance last game fool Absolutely you. Absolutely not. They are, very, they are a very good pitching staff. The Peabody Tanner coach knows he has good players to bring into the game when he has to. It's just sometimes people just have a bad afternoon on the mound, folks, as he takes a pitch up high. Just like our technicians may put the wrong score up on the board, Peep, uh, these pitchers may, uh, may pitch bad games every once in a while. Everyone's human, folks. No one is, no one is perfect, unfortunately. But that's part, that's part of the game, folks. You see some ups, you see some downs. And right now, D'Angelo's seeing ups right now. As this one is Flair... To Gil Martin at second, who gloves it out of the air. So, two down. It looks like some of the Tanner athletes. Looks like some of the looks like maybe discus throwers warming up behind us. Maybe some javelin athletes also behind us to our left. Here's the pitch. Takes a ball. So it may have been may have been just high of the strike zone, maybe chest level. So top of the fifth inning, number 55 of Everett to the plate. Shot, and Everett has a base runner. Takes a weird hop in the outfield. It's one of the reasons why I believe they'll be replacing this field. Hopefully, uh, some of the grass is very lumpy. The ball will take a weird bounce. But in any case, we have one on for Everett with two outs here in the top half of the fifth inning. Folks, worth noting, there is no certainty as to whether or not PBD will replace these fields up here. It's just been talk. Uh, I believe the mayor mentioned in his State of the City address and uh, in just a number of talks he's been giving recently that he's certainly giving a, a large amount of consideration to replacing these fields. Um, also, next up in the budget is a potential re complete refurbishing. Uh, there was a recent refurbishing of PBD's auditorium, but... Uh, they might be looking to completely refurbish the entire setting uh, within the next few years. But the mayor said if that happens, it won't 
be within the coming year, but within the next few years. And the same could probably be said for these fields up here. Well, you hear that, folks? I'm going to be away at college. I'm not going to be able to enjoy the new fields. But that's all right. As this one is flied into center, Irvine gets under it. As the shade begins to cover the field, sun um, goes behind the clouds, but the top half of the inning is over. Everett bringing in a runner to first there towards the end of the inning, but it it means nothing when the inning ends. And uh, Peabody will now enter the bottom of the fifth inning. So the Tanners will send their bats to the plate. Five to nothing lead to work with. I don't think there's any question that you'll see D'Angelo go out to the mound for the top of the sixth inning, but right now they're just probably focusing on plating a couple more insurance runs, hopefully trying to extend their lead. As it looks like behind us, uh, we may have been getting one of our cameras replaced. One of our uh, camera angles uh, may have lost one of them. As our one of our work study uh, co-workers, Adam Hoffman, will run the camera out there. So remember last game, folks, we joked that our battery was dying. Our boss, Gus Margota, had to run a fresh battery out from all the way from the PAT offices all the way down here. We almost lost part of the game. No such technical difficulties so far here today as the bottom of the fifth inning. The Everett pitcher will remain on the mound. Uh, I have to say, quite honestly, I'm very surprised that he is uh, with a 5 to nothing deficit. And they only really have two, uh, after this, they really only have two more chances to come up to bat. They only go seven innings here, folks, I believe. We've really seen no changes by Everett on the field, which is, as Bernie just said, interesting because... Everett hasn't been playing the best baseball game so far. And, uh, you know, the the catcher's giving him a brief word of advice here on the mound. Um, certainly interesting that they haven't changed anything, but I guess, like, Peabody maintains confidence in their pitchers. Everett must do the same. So Gil Martin will step to the plate for Peabody. Gil Martin, one of Peabody's pitchers himself. Takes a strike down low with Peabody's second baseman as well. Um, in the event that they make a change, this one is down the right field line and will go foul. So in the case that they bring him in, uh, you will likely see Cole Cuzzy move from third to second. And the designated hitter may be switched. You may see Mullen be pulled and they'll put... Um, Eddie Campbell in as he grounds to, sh to second, and they got him. Very, very close play at first. So the Crimson Tide finally nabs Gil Martin. Don't let his pitching performance fool you, folks. He is a very talented Peabody athlete. Very good baseball player from what we've seen today. DeMeo, senior catcher, steps to the plate. Pitcher into his windup. Takes a ball in the dirt. For those just tuning in, it's the bottom of the fifth inning with Peabody up. One out right now with a count of 1-0. Peabody playing a very productive baseball game so far, scoring two outs in the bottom half of the first inning and three in the bottom half of the third. Count is 2-0. That last pitch was a ball. So 26 of Everett still on the mound as he takes a strike so the count goes to 2 and one So DeMeo yeah, a deep fly ball he scored earlier. Takes a hardy hack at that one. Count goes to 2 and 2. So we've seen a line of cars forming out here to our right. Fans parking their cars up here to support their team. As DeMeo goes down so, folks, one well-placed fly ball into the left field corner. And, like I said, I believe in a softball game earlier uh, last week, uh, one well-placed fly ball, and Sullivan Tires uh, down on Washington Street is probably going to get pretty busy replacing windshields or hammering out some dents as he takes a strike high. So that's going to be Mike Tanzi, number 13 first baseman for the Tanners. Two outs, two strikes here in the bottom of the fifth inning. No one on base. 
So Everett needs a quick inning if they want to have a chance getting back in this up high. So the count goes to one and two on Tansy. Tansy playing in place of senior Trevor Lodi. He has the uh, the morning off. Here's the pitch. Outside, two and two. So he's got ahead of him. Now the count is even at two. Outside, three and two. So he got ahead of him. Now he's behind on the count. The pitcher is behind on the count for with a full count, two outs, and a five-run deficit. Popped up, and we'll go out of play foul. And given the count is three and two, the count will stay the same. Here's the pitch to Tansy. Gets away, got ahead of him 0-2, and, and then walked him. So the Tanners will send their next batter up to the plate. Everett's pitcher walking Peabody's players a number of times so far throughout this game. Certainly seems to be what's giving Peabody not all of their runs, but quite a few. So the designated hitter, Mullen, will step to the plate. Shot in the right. Back, 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 and for, caught. And catches it with a fly out to end the inning. That had some power behind that one. He swung with passion there. Almost got over the right fielder's head, but he was able to glove it out of the air. All right, so uh, this game is sponsored by Greybach, uh, a tech and business consultation company here in Peabody, Mass., and by Lynn Ladder for your scaffolding and uh, ladder needs in Lynn, Mass. We, of course, thank mm. our sponsors. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to Peabody, Massachusetts. We're here live at Peabody Veterans Memorial High School for Tanner Baseball. Peabody Tanners and the Everett Crimson Tide. Tanners have a 5 to nothing lead in the top half of the sixth inning. Uh, running out of opportunities, the Crimson Tide are to try to close the gap in this game. D'Angelo pitching mass, um, very, very well. Um, he will like, I wouldn't be surprised, folks, if he gets out of this one. You'd see him go out for the seventh inning and try to get a shutout out of this one. Um, the Tanner offense has been clicking on all cylinders. They've got, you know, a good mix of deep fly balls, line drives. Also, they've had some uh, help from uh, by Luck. Uh, a couple errant throws by the catcher to third base. Played it a couple runs early in the game. Starting the inning with a conference at the mound. Brief word between the catcher and the pitcher. And just like that, the inning begins. So it does not appear that there will be a... Actually, it appears that there might be a reliever later. I think that is a Everett player and a back and a catcher going to get warmed up in the outfield. Looks like they're jogging to be on the fence. Um, all I can say is, if that's the case, it's about time they finally bring in a new reliever. He has a five; they have a five, no a five nothing deficit in the top of the sixth inning. So yes, it does look like they're gonna get a pitcher ready. And it looks like it p might be number one, the center fielder of Everett as this one is lined foul into the woods behind the Dan the Peabody bench. It also does look like that Peabody has a pitcher getting ready of its own up there. Uh, I believe that might be Eddie Campbell getting warmed up. I might be mistaken. Actually, no, it does not appear to be so. Grounded on the infield, D'Angelo fields it, fires, chugging hard as the runner, he got him. So I'll check that. See who's getting warmed up with a number on the jersey, I believe. One out, no one on base here at the top of the sixth inning. I believe that will be 
Campbell getting warmed up. I can't I can't confirm that, however, though. So one away here in the top of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. In the dirt, ball one. Count is 1-0. Again, one out, no runners on here in the top of the sixth inning. So with the one out count. Takes a strike right down the middle. So the count is one and one. D'Angelo in the wind up. Little breaking ball outside. So it kind of goes two and one with one out here in the top half of the sixth. He's not panicking, however. He shouldn't have to panic. He's got a five run cushion to work with. Swung on and fouled straight back into the fence behind the umpire, home plate umpire. Scoreboard is reading count of one ball, two strikes. Interestingly enough, not sure what happened on that last play. No addition was made to the board. Here's the pitch, down low in the dirt, so a count goes to two and two. We're telling you two and two, and I believe that that's correct. But again, interestingly enough, no change on the scoreboard. Still says one and two. As this one is fouled away again into the general area of the Peabody bench. And the count will remain one and two, at least on the scoreboard. Again, interestingly enough, a couple of calls now, plays have been called as balls, but haven't been transferred up to the scoreboard. Here's the pitch. Grounded. Gustin fields it on a hop, fires down, got him. Two out. Tansy had to practically uh, lay down on the ground to get that one. That one was very low. Looks like he almost did a split by accident. But he digs it out of there. So there's two down in the top of the sixth inning. So for the most part, in the late innings, it's in the early innings, it was the pitching for the Tanners. In the late innings, it's become the defense that's really come through on this one. It's this one's up high. Ball one. So the Everett batter showing they can brave the storm. That pitch was up high, almost at his face level. It didn't even flinch. This one's grounded. Infield charging his cuzzy. Fires on the run. Gets past Misses. Tansy. Runner goes to second where I'm assuming he'll stay. And he does. Interestingly enough, folks, on that last play again, the scoreboard we're looking at here on the field isn't seeming to count any balls that are called by the umpire. I'm not sure if that's some sort of error, so uh, we'll just have to watch the umpire's uh, calls very carefully. If we slip up at all, um, we certainly apologize ahead of time. So the Ever Crimson Tide finally have a runner in scoring position with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. This could be what they need to get back into this ball game, folks. This is their first runner in scoring position all game. I believe so. They may have had one in the first thing, but I believe you're right. This may be the first runner they've had on second or in scoring position for the entire morning. Didn't say almost say afternoon there, folks. <laughs> and this one goes in the dirt. The count goes to one and one. The count goes to one and one, and again, the scoreboard... It does not show not it. Not changing. Interestingly enough, who's ever running the scoreboard might be having some trouble, or it could just be difficulties within the scoreboard itself. Oh, it looks like they have finally, finally changed it. The board changes. That helps us out a little bit, and Count. fans here Count. certainly helps them too. Count goes, I believe, to two and one now. Still two outs. D'Angelo shouldn't have to panic. Uh, he has the five-run lead to work with. With two outs, though. Grounded, Gil Martin on a knee, bobbles, fires, got him. Ends the inning. Everett almost, almost getting close to scoring there, but PBD's defense proves 
that it can hold up against really everything Everett's thrown at them so far. And that'll bring us into the bottom of the sixth inning so as PBD will take the bat. So after this, we'll go to the top half of the seventh inning. This That will be the last chance that Everett has to try to get back into this game. So Everett, it appears, will make a change on the mound, finally. So number one, I believe that was the center fielder for the Crimson Tide. He will take the mound. Looks like yet, and it looks like it could be yet another left-hander. So last couple home games, the Tanners batters, they've only faced left-handed pitchers. I guess this must be Everett's closer. As and it looks like um, they're actually going to flip positions entirely. The pitcher will, it looks like he appears to have moved to center field. And the center fielder will move into the pitcher's spot. Right field seemingly remaining the same, as well as left, and most of the infield, if not all. So the Tanners, they look like up up on the upper um, makeshift bullpen. Looks like they might have two pitchers getting warmed up. Uh, actually, no, I apologize. That was just a PBD coach, I believe. They have one pitcher getting warmed up. Um... It appears to be Eddie Campbell. I am not sure, though. Can't quite see the number from here. This will be interesting to see as Everett, you know, brings in a, a, a change in their pitcher here. They just want to see if they can do some damage control, try to keep the game scoreless in a last-ditch attempt to try to put a couple runs on the board next half of the inning. Even if, even if they even if this does end up as a one in the loss column for for the Crimson Tide, I'm sure they would like to not get shut out by the Tanners. You know, uh, a five or more score inning, next inning, which is whatever it would need to, to tie or win this game, would certainly be something to see, but it's baseball. So you can't count anything out. We, there have been some truly extraordinary plays in baseball history, and, and maybe Everett's looking to see something like that, you know, happen to themselves here as the game slowly draws to a close. So we move into the top, uh, bottom half of the sixth inning. This game, I must say, is moving much faster than the previous home game versus Danvers. Pitcher goes in his windup first pitch. I believe that will be Cuzzy at the plate, third baseman of the Tanners, number 22. Last pitch was a strike, count is a one. As this pitch will be ruled ball. It looked like it may have been in just about the same spot as last time, but it is a one and one count. Folks, no matter what it what what it may look like from here. Popped up and out of play. It's the ump's game. Whatever he says goes and if he calls it a ball or he calls it a strike, uh he's got a better view even than us with our multiple camera angles. Uh and from where we're sitting. He really you know, it, whatever the ump says goes. And there's Nothing else to say about that. Fouled and back into the woods behind the Danvers, uh, sorry, I apologize, the Everett bench. Count is one and two. Here with no outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Cuzzy is fighting to stay alive. Time called, catcher confers with his pitcher for a brief moment. And here's the pitch. Takes it up high. Count will go to two and two on Cole Cuzzy. Everett's pitcher throwing a very similar pitch to their previous pitcher. Not much of a change like you'd expect. They might want to bring to the mound in a game like this. Count goes, I believe, full. Yep, count of three and two. So full count to Cuzzy. Right-handed third baseman, senior number 22. Takes it up high, he walks him. So the trend continues for the Crimson Tide. They've walked quite a few PVD batters today. It has proven costly in the past. However, uh, I believe a couple runs have come off of base runners who got on by getting walked. Even with a change of pitchers, Everett can't escape this, uh, this trend that's been continuing throughout the game so far. As he sends their next batter to the play, grounded down the third base line, but it will be foul. So I believe this will be Jared Ridley, 
I believe I accidentally called Evan Mullen earlier in the game. I believe I called him Jared Ridley by accident. I apologize for that. Uh, Ridley, the right fielder of the Tanners, number one. Grounded. Little jam play, second baseman. Fires to first. And they got him, but the runner advances to scoring position at second. So the one on with one out in the top in the bottom of the sixth inning here in Peabody, Massachusetts. Peabody now in scoring position. Unlike Everett, only seeing that once throughout the game. Peabody's seen this this situation and others similar to it multiple times. Uh, so far this game, um, obviously, I mean, their score is 5 nothing here in the bottom of the sixth inning. As and the pitch is low, and it'll be a ball for count of 1 and 0. Oh. So it appears coming to the plate now will be Mike Martinez, number 8. I think he might be pinch hitting for the Tanners right now. As this pitch will go up high and out of the strike zone. Bringing the count to 2-0. Two two I believe it's 2-0 yes, two two and and according to the scoreboard. Or it might be. Yeah, I think it's 2-0 oh from our view here. Throw over. Back to second. Diving back is Cuzzy. So if Martinez is pinch hitting. This pitcher very passionate about his, uh, his throw there to second. Sort of nodding at the... Uh, at the second, at the runner at second, like, I got you. Here's the pitch. Inside. Almost grazed his kneecap there, but he gets out of the way of that one. So, we got to think, if Martinez is pinch hitting for the Tanners right now, who will come in for, uh, You'll means you'll likely see another pitcher come in. Uh, he could, because Martinez, for the most part, Outside is... Outside again. Martinez is, for the most part, I believe, the regular right fielder. And the runner advances to third, which gives Peabody a runner at first base and third base. So, the ball may have gotten away from the catcher there and he scampers the third so corners with only one out now coming to the plate I believe this will be number 28 Christian Cummings an outfielder for the Tanners so there have been a few changes so now I don't know who will come in for Peabody um, if they decide to make a pitching change but Appears that maybe some of the outfield has been replaced. Uh, Cummings in warm-ups was the regular center fielder. The ump calls that a strike. Count is 0-1. Pitcher steps off. Runner goes. Steals home. He's safe. And the runner at first makes it to second, which gives... Looked like the effort pitcher. I think he may have gotten a little confused there. And a typical uh, try to... Uh, I guess you call it a trick play in baseball if there's runners at the corners... First base runner will usually try to steal second and maybe catch the pitcher off guard, try to draw a throw, because once that ball leaves his hand, that third base runner is going to be hauling towards the plate. Whatever it was, it was successful, and it brings Peabody to 6 nothing. Because it looked like it almost fooled him there. He did turn around briefly, and it looked like he was second-guessing the throw. Then he realized that the runner must be going, and he turned. And But by that time, by the time the ball got to the plate, Cuzzy had already reached home. So it is... Six to nothing, Peabody, in the top, in the bottom of the sixth inning. With Cummings at the plate, Cummings is a senior. Will be graduating this uh, summer in June from Peabody High School. Count goes to two and two. Only one out still. Here with a runner on second for Peabody in the bottom of the sixth inning. So the Tanner coach making some offensive juggling there. And inside, he got him looking. Two outs. A runner remaining on second. So with Gustin coming to the plate, um, you can now confirm, I believe, that with these changes, uh, Brian Buckley will be replaced by Mike Martinez in left. And in center field, Jake Irvine's afternoon or morning is over, and Cummings will take his place in the outfield as well. So two players who have had, uh, one player has had an up and down afternoon, another that has had a superb afternoon on the base paths and in the outfield. Way out, run it a third, and he will make it easy. No challenging from the catcher as the ball gets away. You know, Zach, that looked like it may have gone over the head of Gustin and gotten past the catcher. Um, 
I don't know exactly. This pitcher, I uh, noticed his trend. He doesn't fire with uh, much uh, heat behind his pitches. He looks to be very much a control pitcher in a lot of ways compared to Alex D'Angelo of the Tanners. Uh, likes to place his pitches uh, with pinpoint accuracy as this one goes up high. Up high again, so the count is 3-0. and oh. Gustin with a 3-0 count and two outs. Takes one and looked like it may have caught the inside part of the play, but they will call it a ball. So he walks Gustin, runners at the corners again. Very similar situation to earlier in the game where they had a corners play and the runner took off and the pitcher hesitated and threw to the plate as the runner stole home. So I believe this will actually be another change on for the Tanners. Number three will step to the plate for Peabody. That will be... I don't believe I actually have him on my roster at the moment, folks. Um, Pitch was up high to the left. Count is 1-0. So the pitch will go, I believe the count will go to 1-1 one and one on the PBD batter. I apologize, folks. I do not have him on my roster, whomever this may be. Uh, he may have maybe a late addition or may have just changed numbers for this upcoming season. Uh, but his PBD batter is number three, I believe. Last pitch was a ball. Count is 2-1. So we'll try to figure out. I'll try to figure out before the next game. Uh, should we call another game? Uh, who the PPD batter is? This one's grounded to short. Quick throw in the dirt, but dug out by the first baseman. So last chance coming up for the Everett Crimson Tide. But the Tanners tack an insurance run on the board. It is six to nothing. Peabody here going into the top half of the seventh. Unless Everett can get something going. I've this mentioned it before, folks, and I. I can't help but mention it again. This is baseball. We could see anything happen here. If Everett were to bring this game up six or seven runs, it would certainly be something to see, but you can't count it out. You never can. So the Tanners will make a change on the mound. They'll bring a closer in, uh, number 35. Once again, another player that is not on my roster, I believe. Uh, could be a late addition or another player who uh, maybe changed numbers before the season. Um, before next game, we will try to get an updated roster for the Tanners. Um, but in any case, number 35 of Peabody will set foot on the mound. Uh, if there are any family or friends of this player watching at home, um, if they could please contact me via uh, any form of communication you can for me, just to let update me on who he is, uh, it would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, if not, I will try and find out on Monday, uh, when we go back to school after April vacation. So finally, we have a right-handed pitcher on the mound. So the changes, um, well, actually it does appear that Buckley and Irvine are going to stay in the game. Uh, I don't quite know how that works out. Um... And we have a new second baseman, I believe. I believe Gil Martin's uh, afternoon is over, number three of the Tanners. Also, if anyone could update me on uh, whom he is, uh, that would be very much appreciated. If you, anyone could contact me uh, about numbers three and 35. Um, if not, I'll find out eventually before the next broadcast of PBD Tanner Baseball. PBD making a lot of interesting changes here uh, before Everett's last chance to score here. Um, Hopefully, looking to uh, guarantee that their their lead is safe. So the six-run cushion in the top half of the seventh inning. I'm sure they would love to get the shutout, but they would also really like to walk away with a win, as this one is immediately fouled away behind the Everett bench. Count his own one. So he shouldn't panic the pitcher for Peabody. Uh, he's got the six-run cushion to work with. It, Hate to say it, but even if he gives up one run or maybe two, it's no sweat, folks. They still have, they would still have a big lead to work with. Uh, shutout would be very nice for the Tanners coming off of their eight to four Danvers loss, but they also want to walk away with a victory, also, as this one is down low, strike two. So this kid throws with some heat, folks. 
Goes has a rather, I guess it gets a slow wind up. Good high uh, wind. Grounded. Oh, you could hear that one. Replacement second baseman comes in and throws on to first baseman Tansy for the out. That's the first out here in the top of the seventh inning. As nameless pitcher 35 takes them out. So the Tanner defense, I believe, should be noted for this game this afternoon. Uh, they had some great defensive plays early on in the middle innings, actually. Pitch up high. He has to duck out of the way of that one. A little chin music there, just trying to get him off the plate. Almost hit him in the head. <laughs> uh, quick, uh, I guess he could, uh, keep, if you were keeping track of this player, it does appear to look like he likes to crowd the plate. Pop Way up. out. Gusting Over left field. Calls for it. Gloves it. Two down. So the Tanners are one out away from picking up a two-pitcher combined shutout over the Everett Crimson Tide. This is it, folks. It all rests for Everett now on, I can't quite see this number yet, but whoever's at the plate. Strike one. So this guy throws with some uh, heat behind his pitches. Count goes to 0-1. I believe this is Everett's number 11 at the plate now. That may have been fouled off of the inside handle of the bat. The count goes to 0-2. So Everett down to their final strike. I'll take nothing short of a miracle to get them back into this game. Here's the pitch. Up high, ball one. So they're going to make us wait for it, folks. The count goes to 1-2. and two. Pitch. Got him looking. And a miracle they shall not receive. And the Tanners, I believe, will walk away with a 6 nothing victory over the Everett Crimson Tide. Folks, if this was Fenway Park, you'd be hearing them singing Dirty Water here. But the Tanners, with a combined shutout by Alex D'Angelo and the pitcher who should remain nameless at the moment. We don't have his uh, name on our roster. But the Tanners, resounding 6 to nothing win. Over the, over the Everett Crimson Tide. <laughs> Sorry for sneezing in your ear there, folks. Um, but the Tanners win 6-0 Everett. Uh, they, ha they made their best effort while they could, but they cannot uh, come back from their deficit. Uh, that's all for Tanner Baseball here on Peabody Access TV. 6 to nothing. Tanners w beat the Crimson Tide. I'm Bernard Parisi. I'm Zach Stark. This game brought to you by Peabody Access TV. We'll also be, I believe, also on the Peabody TV YouTube channel and also on PeabodyTV.org. This game brought to you by Lynn Ladder for your ladder and scaffolding needs and by Greybog uh, for your business uh, and tech consultation needs. That's all from Peabody, Massachusetts. Uh, we will see you next time on Peabody Access TV.